Hello everyone. Today I'll be showing off my Mammoth Brooklyn's Roadster. Mammoth never says what this vehicle is based on, but after a little bit of research I find it's a close match to a 1910 Buick Model 16 shown here. There are some minor differences of course, but also a major one. The Buick is powered by a 622 cubic inch four-cylinder internal combustion engine. Whereas the Mammoth is powered by a single cylinder, single acting, oscillating engine running on steam from the boiler in the front and heated with either solid fuel tablets or chafing dish gel fuel like Sterno. I purchased this used off of eBay from an estate sale. Of course there are some minor problems and missing pieces such as the nut and spring for the front shock and steering assembly. The spring was easy enough to find as was the nut holding it all together. You can see that it works quite well, even better than the stock spring on the other side, but that is because the steering linkage seems to interfere with its operation. It has an operating steering wheel, but it is difficult to turn to the right, possibly because of the front shock spring. It has a forward and reverse lever. In the forward position, the car moves forward, and in the rear position, the car reverses. It can be a bit tricky to operate, though. Steam comes from the boiler and enters the piston, whose connecting rod turns the crank which is attached to an axle. On the other side is a flywheel which transfers this motion to a smaller pulley on yet another axle. On the other end of this axle the pulley is again smaller and then transfers the motion to the rear wheel. This vehicle is technically only one wheel drive as the other wheel only coasts on the drive axle. In the future I would like to attach it properly using a set screw. My Roadster was missing a fuel tray so I bent some sheet metal and used a wire as a handle. It's not pretty, but it's easy to insert and remove from underneath, even while it's lit. The safety valve was so heavily corroded that I had to remove it with vice grips, which marred the knurling. I used some PB blaster to remove the corrosion. I used vinegar in the boiler to help remove any buildup in there as well. I add a half a cup of already hot water to the marks on the sight glass, which makes it about three quarter of the way full. Unfortunately, you cannot see the water line from this angle due to the poor lighting. There is no inline displacement oiler, so I add a few drops of steam oil directly into the boiler. Not sure if it actually helps, other than to make me feel better. Then the safety valve is replaced hand tight. I use a few scoops of chafing dish fuel added to the burner tray that I made. Then I light it and install into the underside of the boiler. Now we just wait for it to build steam. While we wait for the steam to build, I add a bit of lubrication to the crank and axles. A few minutes later, I can hear pops and hisses. Time to start her up.
I noticed the flywheel might be touching the running boards at this point, but it's not. There's just a very small gap. Then I noticed a piece of round metal. What could that be from? Ah, it's the headlight. I'll have to glue that back in later. Let's stop the engine and try it in reverse now. Here we can see the water level, which needs to be constantly monitored. You can see it boiling through the sight glass. Here I can see that the fire is almost completely out, and the engine won't be running for long. Check out how that fuel tray held up. Yep, no problems. Here she is outside driving on rough concrete on a slight incline. Not very powerful, but I think I have solutions to fix that. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. My next project will make making a driver. I didn't scale this one properly, so he's massive.